grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. A warm welcome to our service on this, the seventh Sunday after Trinity. It's great that you're able to join us today. Our service today is brought from Ponsbury Dinu in the north of the diocese. During the service we should listen to one of the parables of Jesus and our focus will be on spiritual growth and nourishment. So as we recognise God's presence with us wherever we are, we ask God to be with us in this worship. Let us pray. Lord, direct our thoughts and teach us to pray. Lift up our hearts to worship you in spirit and in truth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We serve a holy God, and we are called to share in that holiness. So let us have a moment of silence to allow the Holy Spirit to bring to our hearts and minds those things that we need to confess to God. We say together, Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Hello, I'm Mary Worrell, Church Warden of St George's Church, Ponsbury. And over the last four years, I've been on a journey, a strange journey, a journey with cancer. And you might think, oh dear, yes it was. It was panic, it was shock, and then a kind of calm. I was not sure where it came from, but a relief that the doctors and the nurses knew what to do for me and that I was in safe hands and that all would be dealt with. And then, strangely enough, in a small, tiny cupboard, I met an old lady. She was older than me, and she was frightened, very frightened. And I had that opportunity to speak with her and just to hold her hand and to say that she'd be all right, as I'd been through this treatment before, lots of times. And I asked if I could say a prayer for her while she went in. Her face lit up, and I did just that while I waited. But then, suddenly, there was another experience that really threw me. I went to pick up a piece of machinery, and the nurse there came into the small broom cupboard, I'm going to call it, and she was in a state. I didn't know her, never met her before. And she quite calmly said, oh, I don't know what to do. Can you imagine my surprise? Her husband had managed to run away, gone off with someone. Her mother had got cancer and then, quite suddenly, her son had been diagnosed with brain tumour. No wonder she was in a state. She looked at me and then quite calmly said, oh, I'm so, so sorry. And I just from nowhere said, do you go to church? No, she said, I used to, but I haven't lately. So I then asked, could you, do you know your priest? And when she said where she went, I knew who that person was and the church. And I said to her, please, please go back. Go and speak to your priest and you will be given help. That's where you need to go. And she looked, put her arms around me and said, thank you. I think I can. Well, you can imagine two people on my journey. Now, after four years, I'm in remission. What a journey, but I know that I had my traveller with me, my fellow traveller, always got my hand in his. He's always with me throughout the ups and downs in my life. Jesus Christ, he is my fellow traveller and my friend. 
and I know that those words were his words. They were given to me to say, and I was there at the right time in the right place. What a journey. It really was something. And now, here I am to tell the tale. The reading is taken from Matthew, chapter 13, verses 31 to 33 and 44 to 52. He put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until it was all leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field which someone found 
and hid. And then he, in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, shore, sat down and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? he said. They answered, Yes. And he said to them, Therefore every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. I want to tell you about today's reading. I want you to imagine that you're standing in a crowd and Jesus is talking about the kingdom of God. When someone calls out, Boy, Jesus, what's this kingdom of God that you keep going on about like? Great question. I think you or I might have asked the same. Jesus might have had to stop to think for a moment at this point because the kingdom of God wasn't like anything that these people had ever really known before. It would be difficult to explain. For example, could you explain exactly what a computer is and how it works to a person from 200 years ago? It'd be very hard, wouldn't it? They wouldn't even know what electricity was. So Jesus tells them what the kingdom is like. Not exactly like. It's a bit like when you ask someone what something tastes like and they say, well, it's a bit like chicken. So Jesus answers the question this way. The kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. Now the thing is, everyone there would have known what a mustard seed was like because they grew them. Do you know what a mustard seed is like? They're really small. I have one here. Can you see that? Mm, it's really small. And that's what Jesus said the kingdom is like. You see, the thing is, although it starts off as a tiny seed, it grows really big, as tall as 10 feet. That's about three meters, for those of you who work in metric. And that's what Jesus said the kingdom would be like. It starts off small, like a mustard seed, and that's how it was. It started with just a few believers, but then it grew and grew. It grew so much that it covered most of the world as they knew it then, all over the Roman Empire. But it didn't end there. It's kept growing until it has covered almost all the world, and it's still growing today. So how does all this happen? Well... The first thing you have to do with a seed is to plant it. It won't grow until then. During this time that we've had to stay at home, we've been doing quite a lot of gardening at our house, including planting seeds. Actually, it's been my wife that's done the planting of the seeds, to be honest. I expect some of you have been doing the same. If you have, then you will know that you have to get the seed from the packet into the soil, or it will never work, it will never grow. Here's a packet of seeds, for example. We need to get them into the soil, and so it is with the kingdom. We have to plant seeds into people's lives. When we follow Jesus, God gives us these seeds. Planting the seeds of the kingdom can happen in many ways. One of the best ways I know of planting the seeds of the kingdom is by telling people my own journey of faith, by living like a Christian. Our lives and our testimonies can be extremely powerful. You see, I wasn't born into the kingdom of God. I had to hear about it first from others. Then I made a decision to follow Jesus. Once I'd done that, I told others, starting with my parents and my friends. Not all the seeds that I've planted have come up. Yet, 
but I know they never will do if I don't plant them in the first place. Another excellent way of planting kingdom seeds is by the Alpha course. As it happens, the Diocese of Hereford is running an Alpha course online, starting on the 4th of August. You can invite a friend or a neighbour to join us if you want to, and why not come along yourselves? You can find the details on the Diocesan webpage. You see, it's no use just telling people about the Kingdom if we do not live like Kingdom people, nor is it any real use living just good lives without telling others the good news. There are many good people in the world who don't believe in God as, our, as their Lord and Saviour, but they are still good people. 1 Peter 3 verse 15 says, Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. This is a terrific time to be planting seeds for the kingdom. The internet is giving us the opportunity to go to places that we've never been before. For example, I'm in your house now. The soil is ready for the seeds. Are we ready to sow them? Hello. I'd like to share an experience with you that happened last year. I had bad toothache and visited the dentist. He said he couldn't be sure without drilling, but it could be that a crown had gone wrong. He said that if he drilled, my tooth was likely to break, at which point he couldn't continue, and then I'd have to wait for an NHS operation to extract it. Alternatively, he said he could refer me for a private extraction, which would all be over with in one go. As I didn't want to risk several weeks with a broken tooth, I opted for the latter. Whilst I was waiting for my private appointment, I went on holiday to River Camp, a Christian holiday in the hills near Evesham, which I would thoroughly recommend. During the week, one of the speakers talked on prophecy and healings. In the meeting, he said, someone here needs a dental miracle. And my husband started saying to me, get up, get up, it could be you. At the time, I was absolutely determined not to get up. There were over 1,000 people in the tent and I didn't want them all to be looking at me. I started sliding down the back of the chair, trying to make myself as inconspicuous as possible. Then the speaker just said, hmm, and moved on. I wanted to be relieved from my toothache, but I didn't want to be embarrassed. Sometime later, I realised that my tooth had in fact stopped hurting. I cancelled my extraction. They told me that I could rebook, but now it's 12 months later and I'm still pain free. Theologically, I don't really know what to make of all this, as I didn't stand up and I didn't respond um, to the speaker. I also don't want to appear to others like a crazy person, but I can honestly say that although I'm not entirely sure what happened, my tooth still doesn't hurt today and I thank God for that. Let us pray. Lord, by the power of your cross, sow your seeds of love liberally into the little things in our lives so that we can see that small things have big outcomes. The seed of faith has so much potential. Help us to reach out to our neighbours at this uncertain time. To the people we see who are in need, to the homeless, the hungry and the hurt. As a tiny seed flourishes in fertile soil, so may our faith reach ever upwards and outwards, spreading your love and sharing your word. Lord, may the seeds of faith grow into fruitfulness in your name.
by the power of the cross. May our faith be ever refreshed as the seed flourishes and grows. Just a drop of water makes such a difference. It can change everything. As a seed needs to be watered to flourish, so we need your words to wash over us afresh and reinvigorate us anew to face life's uncertainties. A drop of water to a seed is as the first tear to melt a stony and angry heart. Just a drop of water is as a drop of medicine that brings healing to the sick. Father, hold in your loving arms all those who are struggling at this time. Those in hospital or those at home. Lord, may the seeds of faith grow, grow into, into fruitfulness, fruitfulness in your name. Lord, by the power of the cross, let the branches of our faith reach out. Lord, let us remember all of the children and young people in our schools and colleges as they prepare for the long summer ahead. May they feel your presence and hear your voice through our actions and our words. Lord, may the seeds of faith Grow, grow into, into fruitfulness, fruitfulness in your name. In the power of the cross, help us to bear fruit in your name. Help us to welcome the stranger, be a friend to those in need. Let us tell your story, share your glory, make known your love, and may your fruitfulness flourish in our church communities. Each tiny seed can grow into a huge tree, supplying food and shelter, life for the needy. Let us be the haven in the storm and see with eyes of faith the harvest your love has provided. Thank you for all you have done for us. Come to nourish us with your grace, bringing an abundance of good fruit. Lord, May the seeds of faith grow, grow into, into fruitfulness, fruitfulness in your name. Now we're going to share together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hello, my name's Myra Davis, and I live in Hanworth in the Pomsbury Deanery. I'd like to share with you my journey through this lockdown period. It's a strange time. It's one um, where there's things that are nice, are bad, that are happening. But I want there are good things happening. I started my lockdown on the 14th of March when I had been to a 12-hour prayer in our church. I knew when I got home that I would put the car away and I wouldn't be going out into the world for quite a while. I have had a journey of discovery. It's been a happy time because I've been able to spend time with the Lord. I've got to know our Father God, the Creator who chose me before he created the world in Ephesians chapter 1. I felt being loved and cherished. I met his son, Jesus, my saviour, who died on the cross for me. And go and kneel at the foot of a cross because he forgives my sins 
I met with the spirit, my guider, my teacher, and through getting to know him, he shown me the gifts, and from those gifts come the fruit. But as Matthew says, we're commissioned to go out into the world, to go out and spread the gospel to others and to use the gifts that we have. He's taught me to be bold when necessary and to share the love of the Father, the Son and the Spirit in my life.
My name's Reverend David Moss and I'm the rector of Westbury, Worthen and Yockleton group of parishes. We're outside of St Mary's Church Westbury at the moment and the lockdown has presented us all with an opportunity to consider what's important in our own lives when everything we know, everything we have confidence in has been stripped away. What are we left with? The first hymn that we sang in part addresses this. It was the anthem of the 1904 Welsh revival, Domagariad Velamorwyth. Here is love, vast as the ocean. Who his love will not remember? Who can cease to sing his praise? He can never be forgotten. So we pray for each of us that this re reflects our own inner longings to better know and to walk more closely with the Lord Jesus Christ each day. Let us too reflect on the words of our closing hymn. Let's treat it as a prayer going forwards. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. Be all else but naught to me, save that thou art. Thou my best thought by day or by night, waking or sleeping, my presence, my light. May we all know the reality of God's presence, being our light each day, however dark that day may be however steep the valley, waking or sleeping, thy presence, O Lord, is my light. Thank you all for making the pilgrimage up to this remote, remote outpost of Hereford Diocese. And so, may the love of God enfold you, the power of Christ protect you, the leading of the Spirit guide you, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you all evermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ.